Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service and welcome to those who are watching at home. Um, I think uh, the news is improving on COVID. I think numbers have dropped. Um, certainly, I think the peak in London has gone past. So, um, if you're, uh, well, we'll have to see where we go, won't we, over the next couple of weeks. Unless, of course, you're off to Australia for the tennis open, then enjoy the sunshine if you can get in. <laughs> if you can get in. So um, we come into God's holy presence. We continue our journey through the season of Epiphany. And so let's just be still as we come into God's holy presence. So sorry, I've got my mask. Don't you worry. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And so we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. You were born for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came as our Saviour to bring wholeness and peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You come to bring light into the darkness of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the God who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through jesus christ our lord Amen. 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 we'll say the words of the gloria as a response to god's amazing power to forgive glory to god in the highest and peace to his people on earth lord god heavenly king Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And the Collect. Lord, you have called us. Make us worthy of our calling that, in the mighty name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we may rejoice in your love and saving power, and proclaim your presence and glory in all the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, Almighty Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> oh no, I've 
lost my place. What's going on? Oh, here it is. I know it. No, you dare it. <gasps> Caught on film as well. Terrible. Here we go. Are you sitting comfortably? From the book of Samuel. The boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of the God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And we remain seated, seated for our gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him, when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighbouring towns, that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went out throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O God. The story of Samuel is an important one and um, in the Old Testament it, it marks a pivotal point um, in the history of Israel and the history of Israel and its God because Samuel, one of the great prophets, is also the person who when the people of Israel called for a king like other nations around them he was the one who sought out Saul and David and established the, the kind of kingship which became such an important thing. And certainly with uh, Jesus' birth, there was that cry again, wasn't there, to return to that kind of kingship over Israel, that kind of powerful ruler. And obviously people were immensely disappointed. 
But Samuel's um, great gift, as with the disciples, those who heard Jesus' voice and followed, was that hearing the voice of God, then their life became a commitment to the kingdom and to the story. And although, as we've said numerous times, in their humanity, and their frailty, the disciples struggled, I imagine that Samuel did, although he was already in the temple, he was already understanding that kind of discipline of faith, um, their humanity, but, but it was the essential thing was to hear that voice of God and to live in that wonderful revelation. Now one of the things which I often feel ever since my conversion is that um, whenever, I, whenever and, and I don't always get this right, this isn't perfect in any sense, but one of the things I really love about my relationship with God is that in everything I do there is always this other voice. So um, when I make decisions, when I think about the world in which I live, when I'm leading my community or whatever I do, even in my relationship with my family, it, I love the sense that there is always that voice. And um, if you listen to the voice of your own heart, as many in our world do today, it's staggering where you can end up, isn't it? And I think you only have to watch the news today to understand how selfish and self-centered the world can end up. And, and the great sadness with the decline of Christianity in the West is that that wonderful voice that sits and speaks into our lives is no longer listened to. People don't listen to that voice. Now, at times it's been imperfect because the church has been imperfect in speaking of God. And that's one of the things that we now have to, in a sense, suffer from is that in the past we haven't spoken with the integrity and the honesty that God would bring. But, but for each one of us sat here today, that voice, that voice that challenges us to think about everything that we do is such an important part of our spirituality. Now, sometimes we hear that voice through Holy Scripture. Sometimes we hear that voice through those around us who might challenge the decisions that we make. But so often it's the Holy Spirit in our hearts. So it's not a, a thumping loud voice or, you know, clouds, but, but you know, don't you? You know what it is that God requires of you when you make the decisions in your life. And I think it's the thing that the world needs more than anything, is that powerful voice that speaks gently into our world and makes us reflect upon what it is that we do and the decisions that we make. And when that voice isn't present, and I'm not saying that as Christians we're perfect, sometimes we try and ignore that voice. When that voice isn't present, there's a danger for our world because I think then that's when the, the poor get forgotten, that's when the homeless get forgotten, that's when we abandon our mission as God's people to bring about God's kingdom in the world in which we live. People will be lost because they don't hear that voice proclaimed firstly through the church and then through the power of the Spirit in their own hearts. So we thank God, that there are characters like Samuel who heard that voice and dedicated their life to it. We are thankful that the disciples too heard that voice. They heard it in flesh, didn't they? Actually spoken through Jesus' mouth. And we too today need that voice in our lives to help us to live a life which God calls us to, a holy life, a blessed life, a life full of grace and peace. So let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you have called us and that we belong to you. Take us, Lord, and do with us as you desire. Protect us from all that is evil and lead us into the ways of peace. We pray for all those who have not heard your voice. We also pray for families that journey for baptism, those who consider confirmation. And we pray for all who are seeking to immerse themselves in your presence 
and love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we seek to know your love for the world and that the world is in your heart. We pray for all who are working for peace, all who are seeking to improve our world. We remember all who are struggling to gain freedom and independence for emerging nations and communities. We pray especially for any who are suffering from ethnic violence or prejudice, for countries and peoples who are at war. Lord, in your mercy. Holy and mighty God, enfold us in your peace. May your presence be known, your kingdom come, and in our hearts, in our homes, and in our land. We pray for our loved ones, especially for any who are distressed at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember before you all who feel unwanted or neglected. We remember lonely people and all who have no one to care for them. We pray for those who are mentally disturbed, all who by the nature of their illness are kept in institutions. We pray for friends and loved ones who are ill at this time. Lord, in your mercy. And we rejoice with the church triumphant and pray for loved ones who have entered life eternal and now rest in the love of the Father, the peace of the Son and the life of the Holy Spirit. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. going to use Eucharistic Prayer F, which is on page 12 of our service book. And I think from my knowledge um, in the beginning when common worship came in, that I think Eucharistic Prayer F 
comes from the Eastern tradition of the churches and um, it has that wonderful creedal sense. We respond to the Eucharist of prayer by saying, you know, Amen, we believe. These, this story that gathers us is a, is a, a constant reminder of the faith that we have. So we, as we use this Eucharistic prayer today, when we come to that response, we believe, it also becomes for us a, a moment of faith and proclamation. So page 12 of our service book. With this bread that we bring, we shall, we shall remember Jesus. Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we, we shall, shall remember Jesus. Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall we shall remember remember Jesus. Jesus. The Lord be with you. Lord, lift up your hearts. We we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven evermore praising you and saying holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest lord god you are the most holy one enthroned in splendor and light Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Lord, we believe. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by the Holy, your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favour on your people, and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. 
Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with Mary, Peter, James, and all the saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always. Most merciful Lord. Your love compels us to come to Just a reminder, if you'd like to receive the wine, don't eat your wafer quickly, will you? Because um, we can't offer you the chalice to your lips, is that okay? So let's stand for the receipt.
And so we say the prayer after communion together. <coughs> Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Um.